It calls itself a full spectrum life safety agency. That's the LA Fire Department. What does that mean? Well, fortunately, we have the expert to be able to explain absolutely everything. I'm delighted to be joined by Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you, Maria. It's nice to be here. Okay, four decades of being in the fire department. You must have started when you were, what, three? Well, thank you for saying that. It's been 36 and a half years. I was 23 straight out of college, and it's been the best career I could have ever dreamed of. Well, you are now the one that is also responsible for a lot of people who are living the dream. And actually, unfortunately, there have been some heartaches and some problems. Most recently on May 17th, your department uh, suffered the injury of 12 of your firefighters. How are they doing? How is it going? How is the case playing out? And what are some of the lessons that were learned from that particular sad incident? That was a, a very, um traumatic event. It was a Saturday late in the afternoon and I received a call that we had uh, 12 firefighters injured at a major fire in downtown LA. Um, I immediately drove in uh, from San Pedro where I live and uh, drove to the scene of the incident, looked at what happened, talked to the uh, firefighters on scene to get a better idea of what occurred. And I learned then that 11 of our firefighters had been burned and one had sustained a, a sprained ankle. Uh, and then later I saw a video of the, the burn and the video was horrific. It was much worse than what had been described to me on scene. And when I saw that video, the first thing I thought was, it's amazing our firefighters survived that. Uh, the second thing was that I was very impressed that our turnout gear, the coats and pants that we wear, actually did a very good job. It prevented uh, what could have been uh, life-threatening burns. And third thing that I realized is we have to prevent this from happening again. So uh, we do that by conducting a windshield survey across the city looking for these types of businesses. And as of yesterday, uh, we initiated that windshield survey so we can get a handle on, on these businesses that are using these types of uh, materials. Uh, in terms of their status, there's two remaining members still in the hospital, one at County USC at the Burn Ward and the other at Grossman Burn Center uh, in the Burn Ward there. Uh, they are progressing nicely. Uh, they're in good spirits. They have the total support of the men and women of Los Angeles City Fire Department. You have had to deal with something that was never even, I, I could imagine, imagined in the realm of what you do in terms of this pandemic and COVID-19. So what were the challenges that the fire department had to face when this whole virus became such a part of our lives? You're right, the, the COVID pandemic is something we had never experienced before. Uh, in early, mid-March, the mayor made the decision to begin public testing. And uh, as I thought about it, it's within our mission to protect lives and property. This is just a different perspective on how we save lives. So we immediately stood up our first testing center at the VA property in West LA. And uh, now we have multiple test sites. Our most recent one was the Dodger Stadium mega site. We can process there up to 8,000 people per day. So uh, because everything uh, had been shut down in terms of our economy and businesses, I was able to redeploy some of our people that were doing inspection work to public testing work. And then later, we got the core volunteer organization led by the actor Sean Penn. They've been amazing. They've been able to come in and uh, increase staffing at those locations while I've been able to pull back staffing and put them into other areas of the department. So we regularly test six days a week, uh, thousands of people in the city of LA and testing people that are symptomatic as well as asymptomatic. Are you fully stocked? Are you good with your PPEs? Is everything in that realm feeling more secure and comfortable? Yes, uh, I have uh, very good people at our supply and maintenance. Uh, they maintain a, a very significant inventory. And when this all started uh, developing in March, uh, they bought even more. So we're well ahead of the curve in terms of our PPE supplies. All right, so now we are getting into fire and we're getting into fire season. And obviously that is a realm in which you are very familiar because Southern California is always on the precipice of these kinds of things. So what are the things that 
just the general citizenry should be thinking about right now in terms of fire prevention. We have had rain, that's good, but at the same time, brush fires happen in Southern California very frequently and they can turn into something horrific very quickly. You're absolutely right. Uh, the number one thing is if you live in the brush area, we have 137,000 brush parcels in the city of Los Angeles. You should have your, your property cleared, which means all brush within 200 feet of your home has to be removed. Um, we give uh, the deadline, which actually just passed June 1st, and we've started uh, inspections. We're using drones for the first time to inspect uh, residential parcels as well. We, we have done it before for government parcels, but because we had to catch up, we got a late start this year because of COVID. Uh, we uh, have now completed 113,000 of the 137,000 parcels. What do you do with the information from the drone footage that you get? Do you uh, send notifications to homeowners? Do you just chart it at the, at the fire department so that you have accurate information? I mean, what's the, what's the purpose of the footage that you acquire? Well, the drones in this instance, uh, they're a tool for the inspector. So the inspector is out there with the drone operator. So the drone goes up, gets the aerial view, and then the inspector can write the notice that the property is not in compliance immediately. So number one thing for people living in the brush, clear your brush. That gives firefighters defensible space. If there's a fire coming, we can get between the fire and your house and prevent the fire from reaching the place that you live in. Uh, the other thing is you should go to our website, LAFD.org. There's plenty of information about brush fire prevention. In there you'll find uh, more information about our Ready, Set, Go program. Ready is make sure your, your brush is cleared. Uh, set is if you hear of a fire in your neighborhood, uh, load your car up with everything you want to take with you, whether it's medication, cash, your phone charger, things of, of that nature. And then sign up for Notify LA by texting 888-777. So if we're uh, evacuating or there's a fire in your uh, area, you'll be notified on your phone. And the last step of Ready, Set, Go is to go. Now, if you get word through the media or you see us in the area, load up your car with your pets and your family and go. And do not wait too long. It's not gonna be a mistake to leave too early, but to leave too late can be a problem. You rely on technology very heavily for alerts, obviously for this uh, observation with the drones and everything like that. How does technology play in and how has that helped and what do you have at your fingertips to utilize? Seems to be a lot in, in there. Yes, uh, I'm happy to say that Mayor Garcetti is very much into technology, which I, which I love because so am I. It can, we can leverage technology to optimize our, our full potential. Uh, in the brush area, we use Wi-Fi, which is a collaboration between us and UC San Diego, and it's a, a algorithm that we run immediately upon a brush dispatch, and that tells us where the fire is and where we project it to go. And that's important because we need to know, do we need to evacuate right away, and how big could this get? And Wi-Fi uses real-time weather data, topography, historical burn patterns, and within two to three minutes, I have a projection on my phone and then I send that to the mayor and to the incident commander. We make decisions at our command center. We have uh, a firefighting robot that we just purchased for our foundation. That'll be here in the next uh, few months. The robot was used at the uh, Notre Dame Cathedral uh, last year. And I saw it on TV and I thought, they were concerned about um, building right. collapse. Right, and putting humans in And danger. we have that concern here too. Uh, one of my priorities uh, is to protect our firefighters at any cost. And if I have a fire where there, there's a potential for a wall collapse, let's send in the robot. The robot can flow 2,400 gallons a minute, has infrared, a video. Uh, it's much safer. And then once everything is knocked down, the flames, we can pull it back and then we can assess the stability of the building at that time without risking our firefighters. Thank you so much for sharing all this amazing information and best of luck and stay safe. Thank you, Maria. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap on this LA Currents.